interesting guy, a funny guy, and a favorite at the Boston Comedy Festival, and he's here for you tonight. Hello, a warm welcome, folks, for Emo Phillips, folks. Give it up for Emo Phillips. Emo Phillips. Emo Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So much for sharing your Saturday night with us. I thought that would get a big round of applause. <laughs> Good to be indoors. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles, though I am not a Scientologist. <laughs> I'm not even a fan of stupidity when it isn't evil. <laughs> well, hey, you gotta wait ten days to buy a gun. How am I supposed to stay bad? <laughs> My neighbor. I mean, you think you're weird. <laughs> Wait a second. How many people here, by applause, saw me the first show? Woo! Do you mind leaving? <laughs> Well, if you saw me the first show, I'm guaranteeing you right now a completely different experience. Because this whole show, you're going to pretend that you're psychic. <laughs> <sighs> but to be indoors, I, uh, growing a beard. I've just started growing a beard. Because I'm figuring the next four years will be a lot easier if I can pretend I'm in an alternate reality. <laughs> you know how you've always heard that American democracy is an experiment? How many people thought until 10 days ago we were in the control group? <laughs> and don't get me wrong, 9-11 was bad too. But at least on 9-12, every American citizen was not eyeing every other American citizen, like we were murder suspects in a parlor. <laughs> well, it's November 19th, and the inauguration is January 20th. All I'm saying, <laughs> the French resistance would have given anything for a two month head start. <laughs> I'm the Democratic politicians, well, I know they mention global warming, but it's kind of like the same way a single mother mentions on a date that she has a child. <laughs> We've got to lead with it. <laughs> And the next. <laughs> you, can you be quiet? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, and the next year I was Harpo Marx. And the next, yeah. And the next year I was Tarzan. And after that, the costume completely disintegrated. <laughs> This woman in Alabama wants to ban Halloween. She says it honors Satan. I mean, come on, you know what? Jesus gets so many holidays. <laughs> City for a whole month. The town's crazy about Halloween. It's, it's nice. I guess it gets the kids used to the whole doorbell business. <laughs> See, I can never be Mormon because they don't drink coffee. I said to a Mormon friend, I said, a cup of coffee every day gives you wonderful benefits. He said, me one. <laughs> I said, well, that keeps you from being Mormon. <laughs> it's gravy after that. <laughs> but I wish I was raised Mormon myself instead of one of those religions that's, you know, difficult to describe. <laughs> Once my dad and I were driving through a subdivision and he bitterly said, this used to be God's country. I said, relax. Knowing him, he sold at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad sends me to Baptist summer camp. And the first day, I steal a jar of raspberry jam from the pantry. And I'm eating greedily behind a tree. And my counselor comes by. He says, Evo, have you been born again? <laughs> I said, no. It's just this raspberry jam. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassed. <laughs> Was the Pope in Boston? He did it. That's a shame. So many Catholics. I'm not Catholic, but I gave up picking my belly button for a limp. <laughs> St. Peter was the first Pope. Do you know that story? Yes, see, he was named Simon. He was a fisherman from the Sea of Galilee, one of the disciples, and one day our Lord said, I'm going to call you Peter, <laughs> because on this rock will I build my church. And Simon said, I don't get it. <laughs> and he said, no, Peter, it's Greek for rock. And he says, so you're punning in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus says, yeah, you know, um, my religion's going to be like television, just, just for the smart people at first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Peter says, what's well, television? And Jesus says, I'm sorry, it's an invention of the future. <laughs> and Peter says, okay, hold on. Now it's getting interesting. <laughs> Are you saying you can see the future? And Jesus says, yeah, it's a cross I have to. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and he deleted his memory. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of Star Trek. <laughs> anyway, my first job, I went door to door selling greeting cards to raise money for my grandmother's hip replacement. You should break in your body. <laughs> so, my poor grandma spent her whole life in a sweatshop, and when she died, left me $20,000, and I bought a soda. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even like 
Silence, but how can you resist the opportunity to possess irony in tangible form? <laughs> journey begins with a single wedding invitation. <laughs> and I am now licensed to do weddings. A friend of mine married a nice woman in L.A. It was a Wiccan. So, I, I, didn't know what, I didn't know what Wiccan priests wore. So I googled Wiccan clothing. <laughs> and it sent me to underarmor.com. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned about the ancient gods. I learned about Ishtar, the earth mother, her husband Ish, god of approximation. <laughs> I went to India. I saw a lot of swastikas. And I learned that the Nazis did not invent the swastika. It's an ancient Indian symbol uh, for anti Semitism. Great <laughs> <laughs> uh, <in> place. <laughs> The most wonderful moment of my life was at sunset on the banks of the Ganges. And this elderly gentleman is feeding half a dozen birds from each half. Everyone loves a lemon. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> I want to apologize if any of you saw my photo on the website for the festival. I have blonde hair. Did anyone see that? Yeah. Not, this has not been a nice two weeks to have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame how all the creepy clowns are ruining it for all the other creepy clowns. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> okay. So I have a line of greeting cards. Would Thoreau have moved to the woods if he couldn't have written about it? <laughs> if you leave with anything, let it be this. Cell phones are like a dog's nipples. You don't have to shout into them. <laughs> before, before the Bluetooth, didn't you completely underestimate the percentage of douchebags in the world? <laughs> What can you do? One man's pet stain carpet is another man's twister game. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not a big fan of concentration camps. <laughs> but if Trump is going to use them for people that lock their cars with a honk, <laughs> I'll wear one of those stupid hats. <laughs> Make America quiet again. <laughs> Let's have a greeting card. Thank you for coming here. After me, we have, we have Barry Cummings, very, very, who you're all here to see. <laughs> and, uh, they took good care of me so far at this festival. They put me at oh, a hotel. The bellboy takes me to the room. He says, is everything okay? I said, there's not enough pillows on the bed. And he darts out, brings back four or more. So how much do you tip on sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I could hear the couple in the next room having sex. Nothing wrong with that. That's why they give you the glass.
There's a lot of weirdos in Boston. I was in the park, and this man next to me says, Do you know where you're going after you die? I thought, here we go again. <laughs> yet another flattering, yet insulting necrophiliac pickle attempt. <laughs> I've reached that age. I mean, I'm not heat wave old. And every every summer, there's a heat wave kills off <laughs> hundreds of old people. That's 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 heat wave old. By the way, the week after, that's when you want to go to the goodwill. <laughs> And a fellow next to me, he's about my age, either that or somewhere along the way he's angered a sorceress. <laughs> and he has a Harley Davidson hat and a Harley Davidson shirt and a Harley Davidson jacket. And I follow him to the street and sure enough, he gets onto a Harley. And I thought, that's what I need. Clothing to help me remember my vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> so let's have a greeting. <laughs> Such a good audience. I like smart people because smart people don't heckle. If a smart person doesn't like a show, he just blames himself for not having more safety researched as entertainment options. <laughs> Stupid people shout, you suck, smart people. The whole show thing, I suck for not Googling. <laughs> so if you don't like my show, don't be too harsh on yourselves. You'll do better next time. <laughs> Look at Thomas Edison, tried a thousand filaments before perfecting the light bulb, but after that, all his other inventions came so much easier, because, uh -huh. <laughs> Don't give up. Boy, so, let's have a greeting. <laughs> You guys are really cheering me up. <laughs> you know, all these days, all my life I've heard, you, you know, whoever realized that the Cubs winning the World Series will be a sign of the apocalypse? <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Once I beat up this gold bully with a baseball bat. Both his arms were completely broken, which is what gave me the courage. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I like being a person. I think <laughs> the most exciting time of our whole human history was when we started to talk. Talking animals. That's what we were. How cool is that? <laughs> Talking animal, it's like being um, Greeks in the 4th century BC, you know, or Republicans in the time of Lincoln. <laughs> right? I think animals are just as smart as people. Because uh, they, they don't know as much as we do, but everything they do know is true. <laughs> With us, we know tons of stuff and tons of false stuff that cancel out. <laughs> Let's have that greeting. <laughs> you can't judge a house by its cover. Unless it's termites. <laughs> They bought me to first class on the way home. And the coolest thing is the revelation that I could be heating up my own nuts.
<laughs> no law against it. <laughs> 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 the problem the Democrats made is taking care of the old people first. <laughs> if they didn't have Social Security, every other person over 60 would be wearing a Shake Rivera t shirt. <laughs> Not a self hating old person. <laughs> I'm losing my memory. So far, it's nice. I'll go to the kitchen and make myself some coffee, and I'll get there, and I'll see that I just made myself a cup. It's like having a butler. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jeeves. I'll be harder next time. Well, I can't do me. I'm hard to do, actually. So let's have, uh, let's have that dog uh, greeting. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. I guess you started abusing your Indian six weeks earlier. <laughs> Native American culture. I would like to open a Native American sex shop and sell wet dream catchers. Ah. <laughs> Those are the only ones you want to remember the next day. Or also I'd like to open Ebo's hobby shop and people will walk through the door and fall into a hole. <laughs> into a barrel of coleslaw in the basement. <laughs> and they'll sue me and I'll say, hey, it says Evo's Hobby Shop. <laughs> Not yours. <laughs> That's my hobby. <laughs> Although being sued is my real hobby, but I won't tell you. <laughs> I found once, when I was a child, a penny with a mint error. Instead of 1969, it's in 1996. And I took it to the coin shop. They offered me 20,000 bucks for it on the spot. So imagine how much it'll be fetching when I retire. <laughs> oh, thought I misplaced it. Oh, God. Hello. How are you? We have a French person here, I heard. Bonsoir. I speak French. I speak a little Hebrew, which is enough to get me killed. <laughs> I was in France. I shot a documentary about a Frenchman with OCD. He showers up to once a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote an impression, my impression, of French existentialist seagull. Smart crowd. <laughs> Thank you for coming to see live stand up. Thank you. You know, sometimes people think I had my show with that. <laughs> Not always. No, I'm just saying stand up has to be live, don't you think? Yeah. Yes. It's one of the last communal experiences, and we're so grateful that you're here. I know it's easier to stay home and watch stand-up on TV, but it's like incest. You're putting convenience over quality. Sense. Let's have another greeting. Card. You 
you're such a good audience. It's people like you that came me here. <laughs> Let's have a wedding card. Anyone getting married? Never. Never? <laughs> no? Don't be, a, don't be pessimistic. See, I do you, but I'm old enough to be your love tutor. <laughs> You know, I was. <laughs> so, so uh, with this, well, we go back to my place. Forget it. It's a stupid. Story. I could. I could. I could perform. She said, "If only you were ten years younger." I said, "Or you." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's have a <laughs> Now that you're married, here's hoping your naked couplings no longer sad in the world. <laughs> And we have the wonderful Barry Crimmins coming up, but I have one more joke. No, not joke, card. These are not jokes, these are cards. Ah. Any birthdays? Never. Okay. So you have some responsibility. Yeah. Well, being millennials, you'll just regret not doing it afterwards. <laughs> okay, let's have a Mother's Day card. Okay? Everyone loves mothers. When I was a kid, my mom said, Hey, boy, I'm making chocolate icing. Do you want to lick the pan? So I lick the pan. Then she make the ice. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. I like my coffee like I like my women. With milk. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. And happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your picture of a guy in prison with the exact same horoscope. It's kind of fun to do. The other day I read my horoscope, laugh my ass off, picture a guy in jail with this horoscope. Love is in the air. Someone has their eye on you. Okay, that joke is good. All right, folks, I'm going to bring your, uh, your next, your final performer, your headliner for the evening. Uh, you may uh, recall Barry from 